In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use snapshots to get true historical records of your data. I'm going to explain to you what it is, what type of problems that it resolves, and what to bear in mind if you're using this type of solution. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel. We cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Snapshot is a way to capture and maintain historical data, typically for reporting. And it's almost the same principle as backing up your files, where you would create uh, copies or snapshots of your data at a certain period of time in the past, either for reporting or if you'd like to restore that data from that past. Data snapshots work a similar way. It allows you to take snapshots of your data tables, your columns and your fields. So you can either look back to it or report to it in a historical level. With all the dynamic calculations in Power BI, which is great, it can often be deceiving, especially when you're trying to calculate uh, historical records, but not using snapshots. And these type of errors don't really show up as sort of errors, but they are errors in a sense that it doesn't give you a true picture of how your data was in the past. So let me show you. So here's our reports that I created for our demo for today. Uh, at the moment, I'm just showing you the first page here, which is a list of employees of our fictional company. So we have some information about our employees, like when they were hired, what their names are and which departments they belong to. All our employees at the moment are in this sales department. So just bear that in mind for now. So let's say we want to create a measure called headcount, which allows us to see what is the total number of headcount for our company every single month, which would be based on when our uh, employees have been hired. So creating that is actually pretty simple. So I'm going to create, I'm just going to click new measure here. And I'm just going to name this uh, current headcount. And then we're going to wrap it with a calculate straight away. And we're going to count our employees ID in the table that we're using at the moment. And then we're going to add a filter here. I'm going to say, if the employees, so, okay, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to add a filter expression here, which checks if the hire date is less than or equals to whatever the date is in our calendar. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the calendar year month here, which we've pre-created just for this demo. It's not what I meant to do. So I'm going to add year month like so. And then we're going to simply drag the measure down here. I'm going to put this in a chart like this so you can see what we're trying to visualize here. I'm going to add some data labels just so that we don't confuse ourselves. Something like this. So you can see that that dynamic calculation worked great. Using just this data table, we're able to see when our users have started. So for example, we can see that uh, John started in January. So that means that as of January, we have one person, which is John. And then next is James who joined in February. And then next is John and Jasmine. And then finally around uh, April, we had Jane who joined and Let's just say we haven't had attrition since then. So that just gives us our total headcount dynamically, purely based on the hire date on our table. However, let's look at a more realistic example. Let's say we've had a bit of a shift in our company. And let's say that two of our employees, Jasmine and Jane, moved to the HR department. Uh, and they moved at in this month, in February 2023. So let's have a go at changing these two departments, uh, which will make it clear, if it's not yet, what the actual problem is. 
So I'm going to go to transform data here. And the data that we have loaded here, I've just created them here. So we, there's no really source or anything like this. So I'm going to go and adjust it here in the cog icon. And I'm simply going to just change their departments to HR. Here we go. If you hit close and load, here we are. So if I now show this uh, chart and add the legend by department, we'll use a stacked one to make it easier. You'll see that although it's giving us the headcount total as of right now, you'll see that the historical calculations for our department look like we had Jasmine and Jane as HR ever since they joined. And that's because we never had a record to refer to saying that they moved to HR just in February. And this is the problem that snapshots fix. Snapshots allow you to capture how your headcount looked like at a specific point in time. And it could be monthly, weekly, or hourly, depending on how detailed you want your historical data to be. I've created a snapshot table for this demo already using this same scenario that we were just talking about. And it looks something like this. So using the original example, you can see where the main difference is. We have not just one row of data on our table by employee, but we also have one row of data for every single snapshot that we have. So we have November snapshot here, for example, denoted by our dates column here, showing us which departments John belonged to in November, where James belonged to in November, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we have December. And then basically February here. And this is where we denote saying that Jasmine and Jane moved to the HR department back in February and not when they joined. Having snapshots like this allows us to see historical information in terms of how their data has changed over time. So let's create the correction that we wanted to make uh, to use this snapshots table instead. So I'm going to start by creating a new measure now. I'm going to name this one headcount. And I'm going to wrap it with a calculate once more. In this case, we're going to uh, count the ID from our snapshots, add a filter, and then in our filter context, we're going to say if the like this is equals to the max of our calendar date. So this allows us to get the head count or simply count for every single month that we have on our snapshot. So if I drag now the year month and then the head count and change this into a chart, you'll see the key difference. Well, you won't until I add the department now from our employee snapshot table. So you can see that now this allows us to see the historical information about how our headcount has changed over time, as well as any intercompany movement within our department showing that both Jasmine and Jane moved to HR back in February. This basically explains the concepts of snapshots and how you can use it to represent historical data more accurately in Power BI. Most query databases support the ability to take snapshots of databases. So for example, SQL databases allow you to snapshot your databases or individual tables. And there are many different ways that you can do it. Data snapshots, however, at its essence, is the ability to capture your data tables and what they were at a certain period of time. So a more rudimentary way for you to do this is by, for example, using Excel. So if this is your only option. So for example, uh, let's say in this case, we wanted to take a monthly snapshot of our employees and how they've changed over time. You can just simply download your list of employees as of every month in separate files and then combine them into 
a snapshot table in Power BI, which is a pretty easy thing to do. If you don't know how to do that, I already covered it in a previous video. And with Power Query, it's super simple. So as snapshots take a significant amount of memory to store data, it's important to bear in mind how often you want to take snapshots of your data. You wouldn't really want to take daily data snapshots, especially if you're only reporting on a monthly level. Also, when implementing snapshots, it's a good practice to never touch the snapshotted data. So if people change their surnames, for example, instead of editing their records in the snapshots, which will be a laborious task anyway, you should use DAX and its dynamic ability to essentially show their latest surnames when visualizing them in reports. And that's really it for this video. Now, if you find these types of topics like snapshotting interesting, let me know in the comment section box below and we'll try to cover more of these concepts in the future. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.